We are so, so excited that you are here today. My name is Abby Griffith. I'm the owner and founder of Clarity Fitness, Georgia's first body positive wellness center. And we are actually wanting to talk to you really quickly, the nitty gritty stuff before we get into the fun stuff about our October deal that we're running this month. So we have some really cool virtual programs where you can use the code ROCKTOBER30 and get 30% off any of our virtual workout programs. All of them follow our body positive approach to wellness. That's the end of my boring announcements. And I want to really, really give a warm welcome to our amazing speaker, Megan, we have here today. I am going to pass the mic to Mimi, who is actually her former teammate, and she will give us the intro that we've all been waiting for. So let's kick it off. <laughs> well, hello, Clarity fam and friends. So this is going to be a great one. I'm very excited for this one. So me and Megan go back some years, guys, some years. <laughs> and I actually met Megan. Um, I auditioned for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers back in 2012. And Megan was one of the vets on the team, one of the ones I admired, one of the ones I wanted to be, one of the ones I was intimidated by. <laughs> Everything negative, yeah. I was intimidated by her. I mean, she's a vet. I think she may have been on the team already for maybe two or three years, three years before me. So pretty much I had to look up to them and get my guidance from them. Um, for those of you who are not as, uh, I guess, up on the NFL, NBA cheerleading, it is one of those industries where it's all about image, all about body, all about what you can sell. So at that point, you come in and you're basically competing against each other. You don't think you should have to, but you are. And so at this point, I had to basically take a lot of my guidance from the vet and I got a lot of good advice. Um, I actually made it my first time around, which is un which I was told is unheard of. Most um, dancers will go and try out two and three different times. And me actually listening to the vets, actually watching what they were doing and taking all that in, that got me through. And I made it onto the bus. And I enjoyed my year with Megan. I was able to go to London with her and all the good stuff. But that's the background story of it. Today, we are jumping in because I actually recently um, saw Megan on Instagram and I was going through her, something on her page caught my eye. It caught my eye because it went right along with the Clarity brand and how we're preaching the body positivity that is starting to become mainstream. It's about to be worldwide. So her page basically was showing the, um, her transparency of doing stuff with the NFL and then having to now become mentally well with herself in the body that she's in and knowing that how the industry saw us is not how she saw herself. Um, what they were putting on her and trying to promote on her and how they did on everybody else because I definitely went through body dysmorphia. I still have that to this day. Um, and so basically when I saw Megan's page, it basically resonated with me that I have to have her speak on this. She was in the industry you know, longer than I was and it was just great to see somebody else who it's really transparent about it. I don't speak on it like I should on my social media platform, but when I saw her, I had to hit her up and I was like, I have to get you on this webinar to speak to our people because this is big. It, it, it fits in the fitness, dance, cheer, modeling. It's everything that we all see on social media, TVs, commercials, ads, you see. So I needed Megan to come on here and give y'all her perspective on you being in that world for so long, but you can come out of it. So if you're ever going through anything and you feel like you were stuck in it, believe me, you can come out of it. And that's what Megan is here today to tell us her story on how she dealt with that, that body image, the body shaming, and how now she's trans transitioned over to the body positive world. So no further ado, this is my girl, Megan. <laughs> Thank you for such an enthusiastic intro, Mimi. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you, Abby, and everyone for having me. I'm super excited to speak to you guys. My first webinar, very, very excited. Um, I wanted to start this off, kind of just showing, you know, not sure if uh, how many of you know my story. Um, so I just wanted to start by sharing the first thing that I kind of shared on my journey opening up this year, which was. Um, a, a four minute video um, basically of my time. I tried out for the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders in 2014 and was on their TV show that has become quite popular through the years. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of show the clips from that just so we had like an anchoring point so I could speak on kind of 
uh, where I was in 2014 and, and where I am now. So I think Abby is going to show that for me. Oop, pausing, playing. <laughs> no, no, I wanted to be a DCC for quite a few years now. So I decided to try out for the team. Number 93, Megan. There's definitely some jitters because I wasn't in the highest physical form that I needed to be. Being called in for weight to me would be the worst thing. I'd rather be called in for my dance. I think that's something that can be easily fixed. It was kind of like a punch in the gut, you know, you're not expecting anyone to be called in the office tonight. Megan? I hope tonight's a warning. I hope it's not my last night, but you never know. Hi. How are you? Good. Tonight, I thought you were a heavier style dancer with our choreography. And then additionally, you kind of physically look stockier. It's somewhat worrisome because as she said, being stocky or being petite is not something I can fix. I can fix my dancing heavy. I can fix my hair, but I can't fix my size. So I have to just hope that my curves all curve the right way for those DCC shorts. There's no such thing as a perfect body, but a girl can be cut if she doesn't look good in the uniform. I don't like saying that, but it, it is true. Got more curve down the back of her thigh. I do have a little bit more back there than some others. This one looks longer than that one. Coming into today, I was definitely a little more nervous. Kelly mentioned the other night in the office that I appeared a little bit stocky. So uniform fittings for me, I think we're a little bit more of a make it or break it. Fingers crossed. She goes all the way to here. Today we had a little bit of thigh and butt running together, so we're calling it a thut. But she doesn't have a line, so. Yeah. Megan had a little bit of a thut. We can cover cankles with boots, but we can't cover thuts. One area for me is here, and all that I can do is really run and hope that that's where it comes off. So I am hopeful to drop a couple more pounds. So being leaner, that's something I can absolutely affect. Looking stocky is kind of more of a body dimension thing. So all I can do is hope that the uniform was complimentary. What do you think about Megan? What she looks like in the uniform? Yeah. Megan has a really good pop to her, but then when you start comparing to other rookies, then there's going to be kind of a question mark behind you. Kelly called a bunch of names tonight. It's a hard situation. We're all friends. I don't want to see anyone cut, but that's the reality of training camp. I hope it's not me. Megan? I feel completely at peace with what I put out there tonight. Hey, Megan. So at least I can walk away no matter what the outcome is. I feel like I did my best. We think you're a great performer and a great style dancer. I don't think our uniform fits your body. And that was kind of evident in the uniform fittings yesterday. Can't change your body and you don't need to lose weight. You're just a stockier build for this uniform. And tonight's gonna be your last night. No, this is what God gave me. So I just I wish you told me my dancing suck. That would be so much easier to stomach right now. Your dancing's good. We can play games all summer, but I, I don't want to do that to you. I would hang upside down to make this steam if it would make my legs longer. Thank you guys. Hi, we're sorry. It's okay. Thank you for Okay. Good night. The good ones. I just didn't see this coming. It wasn't a weight thing, and it wasn't a dance thing. It was just the way I'm proportioned, and I can't change that. That's why this is just unbelievably hard to stomach. So now that we brought the room down, <laughs> so that's that's my story in, in a gist. I'll kind of go backwards a little bit. Um, I uh, I grew up dancing my whole life, as most 
girls who end up in, in pro cheerleading, they usually have some kind of cheer dance background from an early age. And uh, at 18, I was on the Orlando Magic. Um, that was probably the first time that it ever even occurred to me that, well, it never occurred to me that, that my body or my weight wasn't okay. But the first time that someone told me it wasn't okay by their standards. So 18, they bring us in for this like physical assessment on the magic. And my coach pretty much tells me, you need to tone up and lose five pounds. You're a hundred and something pounds. We need you to lose five to 10 pounds. They start telling us stuff like you should put hemorrhoid cream around your body the night before photo shoot, wrap yourself in saran wrap because that you will look better on camera. So you can imagine, we all have these traumas from our childhood. Some of us, it starts with siblings, bullies at school, parents who are in their own body dysmorphia that are projecting it onto their children. And I have a lot of friends who have shared those experiences with me. I was really lucky to be a part of a dance studio where that was just simply not the case. Uh, all bodies were in the front line. All bodies were doing ballet and jazz and being given opportunities to perform. So really like my earliest memory of not feeling like my body was enough by someone else's standards was 18. And I kind of shrugged it off. I think I, I still was like, well, I look great. I think I look great. You know, I've always had a, a, a significant amount of confidence and I'm very blessed for that because it, it, these, these traumas from whatever age can affect us all so differently, um, but also intensely. And so that was probably my first memory, but I think when it was, was really prevalent in my life was when I joined the Buccaneers at 20, 20, almost 21. Um, I had a very, we, uh, Lamisha did not cheer into this coach, but we had a, a different coach and she was very emotionally and verbally abusive to us, uh, specifically regarding our weight. And so she was physically touching me, telling me that my body, that I need, I wasn't taking my fitness seriously. She was going to take me to London and to Japan on a military tour. And she didn't feel that I was taking things seriously and that I needed to start eating right and doing all these things. So I got, I get a trainer, get super um, obsessed, start taking thermogenics and just overworking out. And I think that's when my struggle with um, overworking out and body dysmorphia kind of started. Um, and, you know, I, for many years, really up until this year, uh, I never identified myself as having um, an issue. I said, well, I, I didn't, I didn't start myself. I didn't throw out my food. Like I didn't have an issue. And what I have learned through therapy and following women who have their own journeys and stories with their bodies and how things they've overcome is that Actually, I was telling Abby, I was very disappointed that I missed a what I didn't know about Clarity back in May when she had one of the webinars with a doctor who spoke out on um, overworking out and how that's, that's still part of our struggle when we're coming out of body dysmorphia, eating disorders, all those things. Um, and so I'm really trying to educate myself and be really mindful about the fact that I, I did still have a problem. It was just by, I think, popular culture's definition, if you're not, you know, passing out, throwing up, or starving yourself, you don't have a problem, and there, there's just many, many other iterations of that um, along the line, and so I'm coming to terms now with the things that trigger me, and the things that I have to put myself in check uh, with, you know, daily, um, just to make sure that I'm living the lifestyle that I'm trying to help others live, um, so did the Buccaneers and, you know, there is an, there is kind of a, an understanding in the industry because the Dallas Cowboys have had this TV show for about 16 seasons. Um, and the body shaming, by the way, was 20 times worse. My, my year was the year that they started getting really called out in the court of public opinion because they cut a girl the year before me. Uh, for being short and stocky in the uniform, brought that girl back to training camp the next year with me, cut me, and then cut that girl right down to the wire like the day before the team was made. She's in her own version of trying to find love for her body, and, and she still, I think, is struggling through kind of finding that identity after being taken. I was only in training camp three weeks, like full disclosure. 
I had relationships with coaches, coaches and previous cheerleaders that the coaches could have strung me along for TV fodder like they did this other girl. I was very blessed that they just cut me and that's what she said, we could do this all summer, but I don't wanna do that to you. Um, uh, Cause I think that it mentally would have taken much more of a toll on me, but it, it, just in the three weeks and then having to relive it on TV, I can tell you there, there was a lot of healing that needed to happen. And I was in a funk about it for six years. Like this year is the first year that I finally, instead of being like, I don't know why I didn't make that team. Like, I don't know why that happened to me. Like I finally took a step back and was like, I shared my story, I uploaded that video. Half the people in my life now didn't know me during that time. A lot of people that I work with, a lot of people that I, associate with and so they saw that and they were like oh my god like you know why you're so hard on yourself and your weight and your body i see this and i didn't know that megan but i understand now perhaps what drove you to have those those issues so um yeah basically 2020 great year for self-reflection um i do have a therapist that i telehealth with uh weekly and that was one of the things that we started to work on and break down. And as I started to share, uh, that was something that she uh, really encouraged me to do was share my story, stop following people that made me feel bad about myself, less than, wish that I had. It put me in a place of wanting um, for anything other than than what I had for myself. So, um, you know, this is something that you know I, I um, feel super passionate about as I talk to my friends. My big thing in sharing was I had a lot of friends retiring from the Bucks, and I already saw them in the early stages of, oh my God, my jeans don't fit. I'll never wear these shorts again. Like, you know, just being so hard on themselves, even just fluctuating five pounds. And it's really hard. They're all a lot of them were cheering in their late twenties. I was cheering twenty one to twenty three. So the body is. And the body and the metabolism and all those things, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to not have such a shift. They were coming out of it late 20s with corporate jobs, and I just knew the pressure they were putting on themselves. So I was kind of trying to do this to set an example for them, like, hey, it's okay. Give yourself a little grace. Like, there's a lot going on. And you can never replicate, you guys, if you were a college athlete, if you were a cheerleader, if you were a dancer, like, even NFL players will tell you they cannot replicate what we did when we were at our peak even if our peak was high school college whatever it was when you were doing your passion like at its highest level it's very hard to um to ever stay that active and i think the big pitfall that i've fallen into is i was trying to do orange theory work out at my corporate gym meal prep do dance class three nights a week all to try and replicate what I was doing when I was cheer cheering and I'm still coming down from finding what makes me truly joyful like I love to go bike riding now maybe not the biggest calorie burner in the world but it brings me joy so when I do that I don't feel like this I, I used to have intense anxiety before I went into Orange Theory because I'm so crazy and competitive and so I'm trying to find ways, things that serve me physically that um, that I can be in a healthy mind space about. Um, so, you know, my early steps and the steps that I encourage you to take, and actually Sarah, who I think is on here, Sarah, uh, Abby, is Sarah the one who writes the blogs? Yes, okay. Sarah, love all your blogs. I read a bunch of them and I, um, first off, Clarity has an amazing, I'm on a marketing and PR team. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm on a marketing and PR team for a pretty big construction firm. And they, I was showing them like the landing page for the webinar and all these things. And they were just like, wow. Um, you know, their marketing and on all their social media for a gym, like an independent gym that isn't franchises is, is phenomenal. So we love all the printing and all the stuff that you guys do for your members, like just major props for that. But um, Sarah's blog about like kind of getting into body positivity and what that looks looks like. Basically everything I would say, so A, go read her blog. B, um, it, it's just all the same steps I took, to be honest. It's following people that are like-minded, that have real bodies across just all different 
ethnicities, all different ages. Like, it's so cool when I started flooding my Instagram with those people. And listen, I love The Bachelor and I love Dancing with the Stars and I love all these things. But like, sometimes it's hard for me to see those like influencer bodies, even if that's not what I love them for. I never followed fitness people. I, I definitely did not have the bandwidth for that. Maybe someday, but I was like, oh, couldn't do it. So, um, you know, it's just something that um, I really encourage you to start first with your social media. Some people need to just, some, some of my friends have said, I just need to get off social media. And I applaud that and understand that too. For me, it was enough to just um, mute. There were some personal friends that I did not want to unfollow and offend, but their bodies triggered me. Um, and to no fault of their own, but their bodies triggered me to like, wish that I had that and make me want to go work out or things like that, uh, that just, I really struggled with. So muted them, unfollowed people that I just didn't need to see their skinny, funny tea or flat tummy tea promotions. It was not for me. It did not serve me anymore. So, uh, deleted all those people, unfollowed, started following, um, a few people. They would repost stuff. I would click on who they were reposting, follow those people. Next thing you know, you've got all these people flooding your feed on your story and your and I'm speaking specifically kind of to Instagram in this instance, but it's been a huge tool as I was telling Abby for the, um, I, had a, I had a journalist reach out to me and ask to write a story on me in the Dallas Observer, which was shocking because anything anti-cowboys is usually not gonna get run in a, in a prominent Dallas paper, but here we are. Um, I did a podcast with a big um, radio DJ out in Dallas and I am trying to pitch a story currently to ESPN um, about, uh, I found an NFL player um, who spoke out on d body dysmorphia, and he almost wrote the exact same thing that I wrote, but from an NFL male perspective than an NFL cheer female perspective. And as it turns out, he moved to St. Pete, Florida, where I live, and is now teaching yoga here. So we are trying to trying to link up with him and pitch a story to ESPN about kind of mental health in the NFL. The NFL players have the Players Association that they can lean on uh, for mental health, for um, career growth after they retire. The cheerleaders have nothing. We, we end our contract and that's it. We have no support. So um, lots of exciting things hopefully coming down the line, but um, my early steps with this were definitely, as I say, cleansing my social media. Um, that makes a huge difference when you open something that you previously were triggered by and see people that look like you and that talk like you and believe the things um you know that you believe or want to believe perhaps um because like these are not i told abby and, and mimi before like i went to my general practitioner today and stepped on the scale and things like that are still a trigger for me like i am not some guru of body positivity i'm just someone that like every day tries to do it and I think by sharing, um, by sharing my story and then having women that DM me and say, thank you for sharing and here's my story, it holds me very much accountable to um, living this life every day truthfully and honestly. And I've, I've struggled even like as recently as like the last month with it. And I've been doing this probably since April. Um, so, you know, all I can say is, is and, and like I said, um, Sarah kind of speak, alludes to this is it's not this like one day you wake up and you're just this perfect body positive person. It's something that it's, it's being mentally conscious of it, of it every day and like doing, doing what you can. Um, so social media adjusting the, the way and the things you talk about. And I have to be totally honest, like one of the things that is so astounding is, and Mimi can probably, uh, she would probably nod her head to this is that we felt so judged, and I think this is women across the board, but I can say specifically in the time that I cheered, we felt so judged by our parents, by fans, by our coaches, by other teammates, that there was a lot of projecting of judgment about other women's bodies, my teammates included, and I'm ashamed of that now, but I understand after going through therapy why that, you know, I was projecting my own hurt onto others, so when I get around someone who is still in that place, I'm more understanding because I understand where they're coming from. I understand that they're still in a place that they haven't healed. Maybe they haven't even like realized what's making them do that yet. 
but it is very triggering for me. I will say that there in this journey, if the, if you have people that are still in a very bad place with their body, there will be times when them being super negative, saying, you know, someone who is whatever size, uh, saying like, I'm a fat cow, I need to lose weight. I was around someone who was a size two the other day, spit, you know, drunkenly saying that at a dinner party. And it was very triggering for me to where I just couldn't speak. I let everyone else in the room speak. I, my heart hurt for her. I felt like there was nothing I could say in that moment, specifically in a drinking environment that was going to help her in any way. Maybe reaching out to her later saying, hey, like, you know, just thought you'd find my page interesting. And like, I'm here for you if you ever want to talk. But, you know, ultimately, you, I'm not here to force that on anyone. Um, if people come to me, I, I always offer support and, and the things that the steps I took to start building my own positivity and my own um, positive outlook on myself. Um, but it's been really uplifting. I've had a lot of girlfriends going through this with me. And like I said, specifically in, in my life, it's women who are coming out of cheer um, because that's who a lot of my, my group is um, that I spend a lot of time with outside of work. But it can be people that are coming out of fitness competitions, pageants, dance, cheer, gymnastics, even ex-athletes. Because like I said, I think it's so hard for any any athlete at any level they cannot um sean johnson is a great one she talks a lot about how hard it was after the olympics her weight gain her struggles i believe with fertility and a lot of her struggles with fertility were because of her eating dis her disordered eating while she was training for the olympics and being so underweight so um there's some great resources out there there's some people like lizzo we're just straight up positive and confident AF and, and they're great. They're great to follow, but there's people who are in recovery and now trying to uplift and help others. And the first person that I reached out to was a girlfriend of a friend of mine that I hadn't seen in 10, 12 years. And his girlfriend and him are aspiring models and actors in New York. And I just reached out to her. I said, well, she doesn't know who I am. So I'm just gonna send her a message, tell her I love what she's doing. She started sharing. <clears throat> about her eating disorder journey. And um, I said, hey, uh, I'm, I come from the cheer world and I'm really starting to kind of try to heal from those things. And I hope I'm brave enough to share my story as you did someday. And, you know, she messaged me back immediately. And um, oddly enough, this all transpired in like April. So she actually is from Orlando. We're gonna be meeting in real life. I feel like she's my best friend, but we're meeting in real life in November, we're gonna do a photo shoot together. Um, but there is such a, there's such a wealth of the support, um, even from women who have a million followers, there'll be people who will, that I'll tag them in a post or um, share something, DM them something, and we'll have a quick exchange. And so it is really a community of women. Um, that you can, you know, follow and engage with. And I think it's like following is step one, but like really engaging with them um, is so awesome because uh, knowing that you're not alone is, is a lot of this journey. And I think being a member of Clarity is, is a huge step to that because you guys are already, if you're, if you're signing up for a gym with a mission statement like this, then you're already kind of, you're in some capacity wanting to think and put that kind of energy forward, which it, is a huge step. Um, so yeah, so, you know, for me, um, looking back on, on my experience with the Cowboys, which has really been my catalyst to speaking to any of this, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful because just being some NFL cheerleader with body dysmorphia, I mean, there's thousands of us out there, but I think being on the show and having the women say what they said in 2014, like people were outraged, my immediate friends and family, because I was cut and that my dream wasn't recognized. In 2020, people who don't know me are outraged by that video because culture, the culture is shifting and the conversation is shifting and what is, what was allowed and deemed acceptable back then is just simply not anymore. Um, something that's really interesting to note is you saw the full clip. Um, I was lucky enough to, to find all the clips, but they did this every uniform fitting ever during coronavirus. The, the show went back and did all these YouTube clips. It was like 45 minutes. And they showed everything. Well, allegedly they showed everything, but that entire chunk about my thought about how I looked in the uniform was conveniently cut out. And so if that's not a testament to how wrong they now know they were, 
I don't know what is. I'm not telling you that the Cowboys have evolved as an organization at all. They have not. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know that they ever will. Um, in the NFL, my opinion is that the standard of beauty comes from the ownership. So you see a lot more Latina. You see a lot more multicultural down in Miami. You see women with slightly more real, real bodies and curves. Dallas Cowboys are, you are a rarity if you have anything other than blonde hair. Um, there's not always a lot of representation um, on a team like that. And that's because straight up Jerry Jones doesn't care to have representation on his team. So, um, you know, that's my soapbox of the NFL. And I, I was asked on the podcast I did, would you, would you want, if you had a kid, would you want them doing it? And it's such a tough thing for me. And I don't know how Mimi feels about it now, but um, for me, I was someone who really struggled to maintain the weight that was deemed acceptable in the NFL. And so either until that changes or, you know, it, I think there are some women on the team that were blessed. They woke up every day. They're, they were great dancers and they were a size that was deemed okay by the NFL. So they didn't, they were never talked to about their weight. They were never, that was never a stressor in their life. But for those of us who counted every calorie, overworked out, did all these things and then dealt with years of mental health issues after, would I want that for my child? Probably not. So, you know, it, it is something that culturally I, I hope to see shift. Like I said, it, it goes on. I, I was on a uh, IG live with a friend who's a Broadway dancer and we went to, to an art school up in Pittsburgh together. And I was like, how is it there? And she's like, it's changing. It's not changing fast enough, but it is the tides are slowly changing in the performance world. And my girlfriend, um, who's the model up in New York, just signed with a huge curve uh, agency in LA and she's getting a ton of work and her dreams are all coming true. And um, she's a totally different human mentally and physically than when she moved to New York, but she's so much healthier and happier now. And um, we're sending her good vibes. She's trying to be in Sports Illustrated this year. So uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a great like community of people. And I just have felt so much warmth and love and that has uplifted and, and brought me to a, a higher place with my recovery. Um, but it is every day, it's a, a struggle. So, you know, I think surrounding yourselves by the right, or with the right people um, and having, the right conversations because I also like part of this journey for me was realizing that um, kids were something that I was questioning and part of my question, 50% of that question was me saying, I don't want to ruin my body by having a child. And unfortunately, a lot of us who are going through and recovering from eating disorders and these types of things, like that's how we feel like pregnancy is going to be because we're struggling so bad with how our body is every day, let alone nine months of a child takeover in said body. And so that was a huge um, awakening for me that could alter the, potentially like my life because I, I was really against, I really wasn't interested in having kids up until uh, I started kind of recovering mentally and really understanding all the things um, that I had been feeling and why I had been feeling them. So, um, I, you know, I certainly encourage people, like I said, it all starts with being around like-minded people. And I think being at a gym like Clarity, you're, you're already there. Um, and then changing the conversations. And I have to stop myself because I caught myself even this year, no longer projecting on women, but when you have a relationship, a traumatic male relationship where they have shamed you about your body um or made you feel less than any you know with your physical appearance like I can be very sharp tongue when I speak about men's bodies and that was me projecting things from a, an emotionally abusive relationship that I was in when I cheered and so we have to be kind the way we speak about men's bodies and listen we're trying to teach them that they got to be kind about how they speak about ours but there's a lot of guys that are that we're already doing that and, and are fully on board with, with this movement and, and they, and they feel it too. The guy who I did the podcast with was like, yeah, I see these shirtless guys on Instagram and I just get so like, Oh, I wish I was like that. You know I mean? It really does affect all races, all genders, all ages. Um, so it's just something that we all deal with, but spreading uh, positivity, you know, for, 
um, for around you and around your friends and the, the conversations you're having, even like in private with your friends, I think it's so important. I've caught myself saying things retracted and then like, let me start over because it's so important that you're just kind of putting the energy out into the universe that you want to get, get back for yourself. So, um, you know, I, uh, it's, it's been an interesting journey. And like I said, I think questioning where it started, um, for you. So, you know, for me, it, it was 18 on the magic. Some people, it starts much, much younger. Um, but identifying that, identifying that trigger and identifying when that, when that trauma started for you was really huge um, to me and sharing with family, you know, my mom's like messaging me like, did I ever do anything? And, um, you know, there were moments that she has spoken, you know, oh, you look great because you lost weight or, oh, is everything okay? You know, and I had to say, hey, at the time I didn't realize that was problematic, but now I do. So let's not speak that way anymore. So, you know, there, it's no one's ever, no one's perfect and no one's ever too um, young or old to start kind of retraining the brain because I think marketing and social media, we're, they're spitting enough at you that you could have a problem with no traumas. <laughs> Just living, walking through life and seeing the marketing that this country spews at you could be a trauma in and of itself. But I think so many of us have a trauma from a past relationship, a family member, someone who was mean or bullied you in your childhood or in your adult life. And um, now we have this whole fun new world of trolls. So, um, you know, I've, I've been lucky uh, that there have been very few. And anytime I do get them, uh, my blood boils over for a moment. And then my friends say, well, honey, that's how you know you made it when they start trolling you. So, you know, just like putting a positive spin on it and keeping your head up and realizing that those people are just people that are projecting that pain and hurt. There's no other reason. There's literally no other reason for it. So, um, yeah, like, uh, I feel like I've been talking for a while. Uh, Abby, maybe if you have any questions or anything um, that you want, you know, me to address, I'm happy to. Yeah, I was gonna jump in, girl. Okay. Um, so it was a couple of points. So I have a statement and then a question. Okay. So the statement, I feel like you hit it like the nail on the head when you said something about, you know, pregnancy and so forth, because of course I have a son now, but um, I had to have surgery back in 2014 and the surgery would have been right around my belly button. And I was like, is there any way y'all can cut a little lower? Because if I go back to dance, I don't need any like scars. I was being so like, because I know how they are with image. And so that's how crazy I sound. I didn't even want my surgery because I was like, so where can, the, what's the lowest you can go? Will it be covered by the shorts? If I, <laughs> I sound crazy to the average person. Even the person doing my scheduling, she was like, so you're about to try to do an open, basically they're going to do like a C-section line on me instead of just doing the newer uh, robotic method they do through your navel and she was like so you're going to do open surgery because you don't want a scar and I was like well if I go back to NFL or NBA I can't have any scars they're really big on image I sounded crazy to everybody else but to me that's that body image that I had that I can't have anything that's going to deter them or make them feel like I can't I'm not well good enough because I'm in competition mode with everybody one little thing that they see a blemish or whatever scars I didn't know how the scarring was going to go I was like, can't do it. Nope. But that's because I was still in the mindset of body images, everything, how I look at everything. I don't want to get cut. So no, I'm not even about to have surgery because I don't want y'all to mess up my body. That's how crazy that sounded. But anyway, my question, because of course I'm still dealing with body dysmorphia myself. Uh, I do bodybuilding stuff now, which is crazy because I go from one insane industry to the next. But neither here nor there. So I was going to ask you, Megan, did you um have you ever thought about possibly becoming a coach or kind of helping segue when it comes to auditions possibly having like your uh cause you know how when they had the judges panel uh i remember seeing a couple of people that were just trainers uh in the in the tampa area and i was kind of like they have a way to basically uh diversify who they feel should be on a team if we get more people with your perspective or who, who could persuade the coaches it's kind of like 
I feel like instead of everybody having that same stereotypical judgmental uh, body image, if you were either a coach or a judge, would you possibly go back into that world just so you can kind of help segue them into more uh, diversity on body and bringing that body positivity to that industry? I mean, I, uh, um, coaching doesn't pay, even in the NFL, it pays like crap. So right. that's a hard no for me, dog. But um, I, listen, I want to be wherever people will have me. So I would, I am trying hard as hell to get this story picked up by ESPN. They're like, oh, we usually pick up stories like after they've already been in the media. I was like, well, I could go shop my story around. I was trying to give you the exclusive. But I think that that body dysmorphia, um, NFL, NFL, player NFL cheerleader perspective if we could get that covered and listen I know at a local level I can get that covered I'd like to get it covered at a, at a bigger at a higher level but um you know I'm kind of gunning for the NFL themselves because I just and they're a hard one because you know look at what happened to Colin Kaepernick like that's the the I had a I had a friend who worked um under Shiano on the Bucks and she was on the coach's side as a female which is very rare they don't usually let it happen and she's like one of the first things I was taught when I came in was there's a lot of, you can make a lot of enemies in your life, but the NFL is not an enemy that you want. You know, they have a lot of ways of making things and people disappear. So it's, it's, it seems daunting. I, I hope that I'm able to get a little traction telling that story because to my core, and it's funny because I've, I've seen it on a few blogs and on a few um, of the posts, the message threads for the show about the Cowboys is that it is it's really what the nfl owners want it's their ideal of beauty kelly finglass the cheerleading coach for the dallas cowboys like she has a daughter she's probably a little bit in her own world because she's been spewing this crap for so many years now but at the end of the day she is paid to keep up an image that the jones family asked her and they'll tell her this girl looks that this girl looks this don't bring her back why'd you put her on so she's kind of like stuck in the middle and so I said when I posted my video like this is not to attack this woman like she's got it bad enough she's got a daughter coming out of college who I'm sure a lot of fans and a lot of crazy moms like mine have tried to come for the come for their neck because they weren't happy about the way you spoke on their daughters so, but the, the problem is, is like, it has to shift at an NFL level. The coaches can kind of do it, but if the ownership is not happy with the way the bodies look, then that coach is in, in she's in jeopardy of losing her job. So she's going to keep doing whatever the NFL owners. So it's a bigger issue that I'm trying to attack from a much higher level. Um, I actually do. I'm very happy to say, although my relationship with the current coach of the Buccaneers did not start off well. I met her right as I was heading out to Dallas to try out and she had just won a coaching position over someone who was like family to me. Um, the, my position, my, my relationship with her is very different now because a lot of the women that I knew who were current, who had coached under her, she handles conversations of weight and confidence and body much differently. Um, she has put realer, in my opinion, bodies on the field during her time. She really put a more, much more of an emphasis on the dancing um, component than, than the body and the, you know, whatever other components that they look at. And, you know, like Mimi said, it, it is a very image driven, um, very, very image driven industry. And I don't know you're ever gonna get out of that. Unfortunately, what we saw in the NBA is when we started saying, well, the cheerleaders are getting harassed. The cheerleaders want equal pay. They just said, okay, well, no more NBA cheerleaders. Like, I don't know if you guys know, like almost all the NBA cheerleaders are gone. The Orlando Magic is gone. The Dallas Mavs had a big sexual harassment thing in the office that I found out about through the guy who I did the podcast with in uh, Dallas. And so they dissolved the cheerleaders because they were like, if someone's, gonna, if someone's female working for us, it's going to get sexually harassed and we're going to get sued for it to be the cheerleaders. So get rid of them. So unfortunately, there's been a lot of that too, where the women who are the ones that are falling prey to the mental health issues and the um, body shaming and the sexual harassment, we're, we're the same ones that are getting the dance opportunities and the performance opportunities that we love taken away from us because the man says, oh, they're said they're being sexually harassed and they want to sue the team, just get rid of the team, you know? And so it's a whole thing, but I think, um, my goal is just to challenge 
to challenge the NFL about why there's not more support for us, why we're not more inclusive. Uh, my friends, the woman who did the article on me in The Observer, uh, just did an article for Allure and Monica Arrington, who you shared with Mimi, spoke on uh, in the article about what race and inclusion and diversity looks like in the NFL. And to be honest, it, it doesn't look great. Um, it looks better on certain teams, again, in certain markets. Atlanta, there's a lot more diversity. Miami, there's a lot more diversity. Dallas, you're, you're like, you're hitting a quota with hair color and race, like it's a joke. So. Um, markets are different. Ownership is different. I always say like you, when I was cheering, I always made myself, you know, I, I always made sure that I understood the market I was going into and what they looked for, because unfortunately that's just how it goes. Um, but, you know, I think that it, it, it's got a long ways to go. And, and I'm very concerned that people like me rocking the boat, it's such still a, man driven industry that they might just get rid of it if we rock the boat too much but why we're not unionized like the players are why we don't have our own union and our own people protecting us i've said that since 09 so if that happens go on going on the record i was i was trying to push that agenda for years i wanted a union because we don't have anyone advocating for us which is why uh both of us were a part of a lawsuit suing the bucks for for back back wages they weren't paying us. They were contractually holding us to, to, uh, to events that they were profiting off of that they weren't paying us for. So um, there's a lot of things that need to be challenged in the NFL, and I would, I would do my best to see, see what kind of traction I can get. But, um, you know, if, if Tara, the current coach of the Bucks, asked me to be a part of anything with the team, I'd be more than happy to. I'm, I'm very glad to say I think she is one of the – lesser offenders of giving women the body image issues that the coach that I cheered under did that not the one you I the ones that we cheered under together were were did a, as good of a job as they could about making the body conversations as an as you know it, it's not fun it's not fun to tell another woman like you need to lose weight like I, I can't imagine that and they're both mothers now and um, so it's a really tough thing, and I just hate that that industry puts those women in that position to do the NFL owner's bidding, because it's not fair. So God, that industry has a long, long way to go, in my opinion. But I hope that it stays around, because it is a, it's a joy. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I traveled the world. I took my first flight with the Bucks, took my first four or five flights with the Bucks internationally. Um, and friend, I've had friends for 11 years that I would have never met through, you know, but through that experience. So it's not all bad, but you know, there, there just are certain things to that industry. Unfortunately, that those are harsh realities. So what else you got for me? I think that was really good. I don't know if anybody else has questions, but I thought you hit that like spot on. There were some things I did not know about and that now kind of like, it's a concern. I did not know they had got rid of like the NBA dancers. So I'm like, oh, well, they're really going to get rid of us. Like NFL is next. Um, and my biggest thing with that, though, is because, you know, at, you know, every year they do where they bring the um, youth in and we do like the halftime. Was it halftime or was it pregame that we would do like the little youth right. field show with? And it's yep. like have us mentoring or the biggest thing about us is we're supposed to be mentors to the youth and little girls look up to us and you know it brings them money of course because they get your child could be a bucks cheerleader for the day and all that right. we put so much into it but then we have all shapes and sizes that come out and want to be a dancer cheerleader but then you're not giving them that same body image who actually makes the team right so it's like that does not resonate well because I remember seeing we had all types of shapes sizes colors races, you know everything out there and my little girl my little girl Lee was in a wheelchair do you remember her I do I know and, uh, and, uh, she's still my friend of the day she's in college oh. she drives a she drives a car now um she had brittle bone disease and uh she was she raised over six figures for Shriners Hospital amazing kid and she was brought into my life by the Bucks cheerleading organization and the the junior cheer so that was really cool. I mean, there, there. That's true. But it, you're right. Like the the level of diversity, unfortunately, at you know when those girls graduated 18 and really want to come to the team, 
it's just they're not they're not seeing themselves represented on the team right so and it was another point that you had made that i didn't think about well it, it, it actually stays in my brain and i don't know i think about how you know i'm short you guys i'm five one and i remember um, you were one of the captains that her name is Millie, and she's dominican Millie was dominican right yes mm -hmm. so we have like she was talking about quotas so i remember actually and this is something that i guess is kind of a transparent moment um i remember um one of the vets she's um black she's um she told me that i wasn't competing against it was like there's 300 girls in there she said i was only competing against the black girls and that was like the reality of it i was meeting that quota it wasn't going against the 300 girls i was going against the maybe 20 black girls that were in there because they're only going to choose maybe four of us and that's basically what it was it was four of us and it wasn't if you count if we just say of color you had um, one that was dominican and you had three of us that were black and again with me being five one me and the dominican we were about the same height but mm -hmm. she was the captain of the shorties so i know that all this may sound crazy to you guys but in order for us to look the same height on the field they put the shorties with the shorties the mediums you know the medium height and the tall girls together so you all look together when you're taking a picture so what was funny though is because the captain was already of color they put me with the mediums so to speak so i wouldn't be the same lineup as her and then when you're in that lineup i'm just short because of course i'm five one these girls are five four five you know whatever but because they didn't want us together i had to move up to another lineup then on top of that when you got ready for pictures it was all about hair color next to each other or complexion next to each other so two brunettes could not stand next to each other i remember we were about to take a picture and she moved one of us around so a blonde could be next to a brunette like things of that sort are the things you don't even think about and it's like how much vain and like narcissistic yeah. can we get but it was those little things that happened and that this, it sits in my mind. Anytime I think about an audition, now I'm looking at like quota of how many is it of me, my color. Then I'm looking at people's bodies and I'm like, oh, I could beat her. Like, that's how I used to think. It wasn't even about my dance. Dance was like on the back end. It was image first. Then it was, of course, looking at, okay, do I have enough, you know, breast up top? Do I have enough this? Do I have enough body for them? Is my waist snatched enough? Like, that came first. The dancing was last. And that's how crazy that sounds because the whole reason why I joined was my passion for dance. How can I keep dancing after college? Right. I, and I was so like naive and ignorant to it all. I mean, I literally was really like naive to it. I came in, didn't even have makeup really on. They had to tell me like, you may want to put like a lip on. I'm like, oh, I need all of that. I just want to dance. And so I yeah. had a harsh reality when I came to it. Um, and I even saw one of my rookie teammates they almost pulled her off because they said she like she was getting um, muffin top. They almost pulled her from a game. And I remember that because we had a trainer and I remember them having her, they changed up her diet and they said something with her cardio. And that stuff like sits with me. Like yeah. that was years ago. And I still remember that stuff like it just happened because I remember she was like crying because of course we're rookies. When you're a rookie, you feel like the world is on top of you and you feel like I, I can never mess up. And I remember her crying, saying she may not, I may not be able to do the game because I'm getting heavy. To the average eye, you're like, heavy wear. And they were saying, you're getting a muffin top. So on the uniform, again, in the uniform, you're not going to look how we want you on the field. So you may have to stop this game. Yeah, um, one behind the scenes T moment with the Cowboys, because I spared, I, I don't censor myself when talking to them. They certainly didn't censor themselves when talking about me. Um, they weighed us in every Friday. There was a huge scale in the corner of the studio. Every Friday we got on the scale, they, they weighed us at finals. So there was like 60 of us in finals. If you deviated more from more than, I think, three pounds, <laughs> they didn't care if you deviated down. But if you deviated up more than three pounds, there was a, a list in the locker room of all the names, all the weights. So your weight was publicly posted. And then... Um, uh, if you deviated, your name was highlighted. And if you stayed on that list for more than a week, you were put on weight probation. It was very shameful. And there was a woman from the box who made it that year. And um, she had she had a thyroid issue. And she was um, in full blown bulimia and really messed her her messed her body up because um, she had to, she put herself into an eating disorder because after I got cut, she was so scared that they were coming for her next on her weight and all these things that she just 
was doing anything she could and she messed her body up for years just to keep appease them and so it's it's just really um it's a it's a really brutal industry and dallas is the worst and the most abusive in that way and i don't know how many more people have to come out before uh they're put in check um but you know I, there's a lot of women from the Cowboys who secretly still message and applaud the things I'm posting, but they don't post it publicly because they're worried. If they're still scared. There's like this fear tactic that is used even after you're off the team to keep you from ever speaking out about the things that go on when you're on the team. So um, I'm not on the team, so I, I talk about it. But it's uh, I know a lot of people are big fans of that team and that show specifically because it is based on I was a huge fan before I tried out and I was like look I'm meeting Jay the trainer I'm meeting Kitty Carter like it was so cool and exciting but and those people were great um influences in my life but um they were by far the most the most brutal with the body stuff and um I'm just grateful that I've seen the higher higher reason for that not working out for me now and that is certainly things like this getting to speak to you guys so thank you for having me Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Definitely appreciate you for sharing your story. And I hope we can get you on to some future things with us because we're only one gym now, but we're going to spread. Like you said, speaking into existence, Clarity Fitness is going to be on the map in several different locations. And we're going to turn this thing around where body positivity, and I think it's going to become a thing anyway. So Abby's really ahead of her time. So with this gym, you know, she's ahead of her time. So I want to go ahead and make sure that you're a part of this journey with us too, because uh, I really think uh, your um, position with the industry that you've already been kind of a part of, that's what we need. That like we need more pioneers of that because you're a part of that. Well, women in general, we, all these different industries, fitness, modeling, um, maturity, the dance, the gymnastics, all of that in a whole, that embodies what most, you know, women or ladies, you know, are brought up on. And it starts with us to go ahead and pioneer that off. Like, we got to go ahead and, like, get this um, body image, body dysmorphia, eating disorders. We need to go ahead and nip that in the bud now. Um, and I think, again, with your help, with Abby, with all of us trying to bring this thing together, I got to get you on for something in the future. Because, um, you know, we're just starting off of, we about to blow up, girl. We about to blow up. Clarity's going to blow up. I need you to be a part of that with us. So please, please keep me um, in your contacts. Don't mute and unfollow me because I'm not part of that life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we shall continue to connect. Um, I don't know if anybody else had any questions. But if not, again, I would like to say thank you to Megan for coming on to our Clarity, Clarity webinar and giving us the best presentation ever. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. It was so nice to virtually meet y'all and um, my, uh, you know, I, I was telling them my mom used to live up near Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, she doesn't anymore, but you know, I always love, I always love a, a flight. So, uh, you know, I would love to, to get up to Georgia and see you guys in person when that's what they could get. For sure. Definitely. Yay. Thank you so, so much, Megan. This is absolutely awesome. I know everyone's freaking out. I'm getting all the messages. So you did awesome. And we will have this posted to YouTube ASAP so that you can spread the word and get more people your story and share that out to the world. We're going to change the world and you're doing all of the amazing work. So thank you so, so much. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. It was so nice to meet everyone. You too. <laughs> Bye. Guys. Bye. Bye.